Hi, my name is Ezra Wolf, and I'm going to show some of the course features of Ethos CE Learning Management System. To start with, I'm logged in as a course administrator, and we're looking at a course page right now. You can see that the course title is at the top. The course is active, and as a user, I can bookmark it or share it on any of the social networks. If you scroll down, you'll see a course summary box on the right, and here you can see the number of credits that are available, the date the course opens and closes, and the event date. This is a live course, so it has an event date as well as an open close. The course description on the left um, can take all kinds of rich text and multimedia embedded in it. So you can see here's an image. If you scroll down further, a video. Going down past the description, you can see we have a section for learning objectives, and here we get to the location information. So for this particular course, which is happening um, at the end of the month, you can see that there is a start and end date. You can add this to your calendar by clicking on any of these icons. Here's a location and a map with a link to view it on Google in order to get directions. Finally, at the bottom of the page, we have the number of credits and accreditation statements, faculty and disclosures, and any attachments that you might have on the course. So now I'm going to go ahead and edit the course as an administrator so we can look at some of the settings required to set up this course. We've organized the fields into sections across the top and subsections across the side. The first is title and description. There's a time and place so you can have a separate start and expiration date for the course as well as a live event date and location. There's a section for faculty and disclosure course format and instructions, and then prerequisites. Prerequisites allows you to set another course as a prerequisite for enrolling in this one. Also in the bottom of the prerequisite section, you can also limit access to the co course by password or by roles. The social tab allows you to set who can rate this course. All users, completed users, enrolled users, or nobody are all options. Files are attached in the file attachment section. The course settings is where you're going to set settings for the behavior of the course, the number of credits that you're awarded, and the type of credit, and also any reminders that you might want to set out. Reminders can be sent out via email or SMS based on completion or inactivity in any of the course objects, such as a quiz or evaluation. Pricing section is where you would set pricing for the course if you're going to be selling it. And publishing is where you'll do things like set the URL, meta tags, and whether it's ready to be published or not. So now we're going to look at the course outline. The course outline contains the objects that comprise the learning activities inside of the course. In this course outline, you can see that there is a book entitled Zebras, a video about zebras, a link to a file, a quiz, a web form, which would be an evaluation, a credit, and a certificate. All these objects can be added by selecting the type of object you'd like to add and clicking Add Object. As an example, let's add a simple course page. I select Course Page and click Add Object. And here's my course page that's just been added to the site. I'm now going to click on Settings, where I can do things like set the title for the course page, the amount of time that we estimate it would take a user to complete it. I can set the course page to be enabled, visible or not, and whether it's complete completion is required for it or not, or whether it can be skipped. Here's where I can reference existing content, for example if I have a template that I want to reuse over and over again, or create a new piece of content when I create this, and I'm going to set this as private. There are three different access-based condition tabs. Um, one is based on the completion or beginning of a separate course object, graded-based access, which would be access to this page based on a grade, or date-based access, access to this page based on a date. When I've set all the settings that I want to, I go ahead and click Update. And then I save my course outline and now I've added a course page to my course. In this way, all the course objects are added to the outline, can be rearranged by dragging or dropping, and the user is ready to take the course. Let's do that next. I'm now logged in as a student, so let's go ahead and take this course.
At this point, I see the course instructions, and I'm also being asked to answer a question before I start the course. Am I interested in taking similar courses? In this way, an administrator can collect data at the time of enrollment unrelated to the course itself or the user profile itself. I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, please send me an email. Now I'm ready to start the course. On the course start page, I get instructions, and on the left, you can see that there's a navigational menu for the learner. You can see here that there are a number of different course objects. I'm told which ones are required and how long it takes to complete each one of them. I click on Resume Course. And now I'm going through the page about zebras. This is a six-page book where the user can either go through using a jump menu or click through each one of these pages simply by clicking Next Page. The book object allows a course administrator to create content directly in Ethos CE without having to use an external course editing application. So I finally made it to the end of the book and I'm going to go ahead and click Next. At this point I'm viewing a Zebra video. It can be embedded at any size from any video provider that you'd like. YouTube, Vimeo, Brightcove, etc. There we go. So now I'm going ahead and click Next, and I'm going to get to the Zebra quiz. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the quiz. This is a three-question quiz that has a 70% passing rate. I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Quiz, and I'm going to start by answering a true or false question, followed by a multiple choice question, And finally, another true or false question. So now I've completed the quiz, and I'm looking at the feedback that the administrator has set. Each one of the feedback options is configurable by the administrator, so I can show the learner the choice they made, whether it was correct or not, the score they got, if there was any response feedback, and whether the answer was correct or not. In addition, I can also put on a peer comparison so you can see what the, my peers did in terms of their selection. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and now we have the evaluation. Um, the evaluation is in non-scored form where I can give feedback to the course administrator on how the course went. You can have open text or multi-select. This is a grid rating scale. and we also have question branching, so that if one question requires follow-up questions, you can go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to hit Submit, and then go to the next course object. I can now claim one attendance credit because I've finished this course. And when I go to the next page, I have the ability to download my certificate. So that's a quick overview of the Ethos CE course creation and user workflow. Check back soon for more videos or go to www.ethoce.com.